So I finished this one up. I like the, uh, the way the eyes came out. It wasn't just lightening up. Um, the eye, the white of the eye here, it was moving it a little farther over to move the whole iris over. And then initially the pupil, that was the way I wanted it, but this one had gotten too big. So then I matched the pupil up too. And that makes it work. That whole side was just so dark there. And then I did all the other darkening, everything else there. And, and now that it's finished, I never do this until it's finished. I sign my name, I sign it small, I sign it in pencil, and put a copyright either in front of my first name or in front of the date. Uh, sometimes the date goes above my name, always just in the lower right. Uh, and then I put the title over in the left, wherever I can find a place. So this is Scott and Fry. <coughs> Pardon me. <laughs> Scott and Fry cubed. Because of this whole series of things that evolved out of just one delighted response to a picture that's extremely complex. I've had on figuring it out. So there's that. That's done. And I mean finished. Okay, finished. Oh, so now that it's finished, I can start another one. I wasn't able to find my old dull kitchen knife or my letter opener. I'm going to use these. These are a utility scissors. Oops. This watercolor block is already off the backing. Uh, but I'm going to take this paper off. I'm not going to use the scissors part of these. I'm going to use the back side of the blade. It needs to be dull and should be cleaner than this as well. But this is already popping up. See, I can actually, well, almost pull it off with my finger, but it's, yeah, you can see what it looks like real well there. Okay, so I'm just going to put this down. Back side of the blade. Oop. It's giving me a little trouble there. I'll work it off with my thumb. Okay, back to here. I'm going to try the front side, living dangerously, setting a bad example. I'm just barely going in there, though. This is an older um, one, so the gum is a little stiff, but that's okay. It's where it's supposed to be. Look at this. The top is still all where it's supposed to be. Okay, I'm going to pop this from the top now. As If these other sides were still on there, we'd have to begin taking it off by going in here. And that's why a letter opener is the right tool for the job. These are too fat, really, to break the seal. There it goes. I was looking all over in the kitchen. I had a, a knife on the floor for probably a year on the floor of the hall, looking at it, gathering dust. I moved it this week somewhere. The knife is a knife that isn't good for a knife anymore, but it's for doing stuff like this. And I said, oh, I need that knife for this. So I will... Look for, I have a beautiful little letter opener. I couldn't find 
that might be with some okay now I'm doing just regular how we pull things off neatly don't just do that and pull it up neatly because you've got another one here to work on see there so now it's a little, you know, wrinkly and all, but the whole paper isn't all curled up. And here we are, ready for the next piece. That's where it goes. The next piece is going to be what this, this is how this came out. Because when I started drawing on here, I said, okay, freehand. I will approach this the same way. I approach this, but I'm going to kind of duplicate the uh, thumbnail and everything to keep it loose. So that's what I started. And I've talked about the scale before, and I, specifically this one. And this is what I wound up with. And I drew this one in in pencil to try to keep it smaller. And this one also is the largest so far. I, I don't think there'll be any larger, but here's the first one. Like so. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Oh, um, please subscribe. Trying something this week. I don't do any social media on Tuesdays. And to, this week I, I scheduled... Um, I already got the first few of some of the videos of this that I've been doing all along in progress. I scheduled those to go off at 6, 7, 8, and 9 tomorrow. I'm just experimenting what happens with that and where they wind up in a lineup, too. It's really hard to keep things in order <clears throat> for people to watch on YouTube. Anyway, those are... Um, being autumn scheduled postings just for fun. Uh, but the very beginning of this is already up, stage one. Uh, and, oh, this one here. This is the one we're talking about here on this particular video. So it's quite nice. And, oh, it was so scary. Watch the video. So, I was really, really distressed about how dark it went here and, and, and in a big dilemma about should I or shouldn't I? And that's watercolor pencil, but it is white. <clears throat> but it brought the whole painting to life. <laughs> Oh, and on the, I posted too on, a, on another video. I did resist the temptation to put a little bit of the numbers on the dial to pick up, pick up uh, there to pick up some of that white to bring it around. And I said, no, 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 it's outside of this triangular business in here. I'm not going to do it. And this was an emergency. The Watercolor Society might even forgive me. <laughs> it's something I enjoy carrying on about. And it's nice. It's nice to have um, structure to work inside because it really pushes you. I still have a really good painting on. Mm, I didn't plan to use the white. I think that's another thing, too. It's like. You're not supposed to be painting with white when you're using transparent watercolors. You're supposed to use the 
white of the paper and protect your whites, and that's the whole challenge. And you've seen me do that all along from the first step, and how there were just kind of a few marks going in here and there, and it was hard to see what, what I did or where I was going. And I also posted um, a new thumbnail for the first one that shows the photograph along with uh, this in this state so that people have some idea what it is that I'm doing because you can't see what the photo I'm working from <laughs> when I'm doing it and it's just a blank page with some washes here and there and I know where I'm going so uh, but you can't see the picture that I'm following and there's no uh, pencil in this one at all and you can also see where I've been see and when it's done it'll just be rich Lots of layers. And you can look back at the earlier videos of this one and see how it got there. I like it. And then oddly enough, it came out into your classic abstract colors, red, orange, and blue, green. All right. Thank you. Um, um, again, please subscribe. Um, Give me a thumbs up. It helps me get my things out for other people to see. And I think that most of them are really good and relaxing educational videos. And a lot of them, I think, would be great for people who are um, convalescing from one thing or another. Because it's a nice, quiet activity that you can see. You don't see me and I'm not talking at you. You can just see this and you can kind of participate in what's going on by my hands being here for you. Um, and I learned that myself watching Maramey's Small Arts when I was recovering from ankle surgery. And then it was the early days of the, I think maybe the early days of the pandemic, but it was just kind of a cold, quiet time. And she was such a nice, warm voice. And... I just saw her hands working and I could feel them. I could kind of absorb the experience. It's not a, a, a body memory, but it's kind of close to it. It's something you can replicate. So, uh, or that you can f kind of experience as you look at it and feel like you did. All right, this is a seven minute video with, Six minutes, six and a half minutes of babbling. No, just talking. Uh, let me know if I'm talking too much. Okay. If I add these little things on. But this is stuff I think about. And I think I just want to say it because this is a little pop-in video of, aha, I finally finished it and this is what it looks like. And thanks for looking. And we're going back to this, which is uh, the whole thing is being painted in real time.